Selling your car to Carvana is as easy as... As easy as pie? Sure. All you have to do is enter your license plate or VIN. As easy as a stroll in the park. Okay. Then just answer a few questions and you'll get a real offer in seconds. As easy as singing. Why not? Schedule a pickup or drop off and Carvana will pay you that amount right on the spot. As easy as playing guitar. Actually, I find that kind of difficult. But selling your car to Carvana is as easy as... Can be. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get an instant offer today. Hi, my name is Richard Dix, and this is How Did That Happen? A podcast where I look at everyday things or events and try to figure out how they came to be. Every week I will research one topic, and by the end of the episode, I hope to truly have the answer to the question, How Did That Happen? Hello, and welcome to another episode of How Did That Happen? This week we are discussing Valentine's Day. Is it all about hearts and chocolates, or do we get to beat some women with dead animal hides? Stick around to find out. Come along for the ride this week as I ask, Valentine's Day, how did that happen? Uh, The history of Valentine's Day is still up for debate, but there are some things that scholars agree on. The Catholic Church recognizes at least three different saints named either Valentine or Valentinus, and all of them were martyred. One theory is that there was a man named Valentine in third century Rome, And during this time, Emperor Claudius II decided that single men were better soldiers, so he outlawed marriage for young men. Valentine did not abide by this and continued to perform marriages for those couples in secret. When Claudius II found out about this, he had Valentine beheaded. Others believe it was another Valentine who was killed by the same emperor around that time. And to be be full disclosure, there were three guys named Valentine who were killed around this time who, you know, the... The creation of Valentine's Day could be attributed to, but no one, no one really knows. Um, the Catholic Church canonized their martyrdom and named a Saint, and named a Saint Valentine's Day in their honor. I say they because I mean if they don't know, how can you really say this is one guy? Before this happened, there was a Roman feast slash celebration called the Feast of Lupercalia, which occurred at February, which occurred on February fifteenth every year. It was a fertility celebration that had some odd activities to say the least. It started with Roman priests going to a cave where they believed the original founders of Rome, Romulus and Remus, were cared for by a she-wolf. In this cave, the priest would sacrifice a goat for fertility and a dog for purification. After the sacrifice, the hides were cut into strips, dipped into blood, and used to slap the unwed women of Rome. Contrary to everything you are thinking, these women actually welcomed the activity. Next, The names of those women were put into an urn and drawn out by eligible bachelors of Rome. Most of these connections ended in marriage, or at least that's what they said. In the 5th century, Pope Galatius I decided that in order to get rid of the pagan religions, he would combine the Feast of Lupercalia with St. Valentine's Day, a day to honor any of those dudes named uh, Valentine that I talked about earlier. By this time, the feast was not as aggressively disgusting as it was then, and they had managed to put their clothes back on, but it it would remain a day of fertility and love. Uh, as I said, in the, in the 5th century, um, the Feast of Lupercalia was outlawed by Pope Galatius due to its pagan principles, and as time went on, St. Valentine would become the main focus of the middle of February. In the Middle Ages, it was common to celebrate Valentine's Day. The first person to write about Valentine's Day as a celebration of love was the poet Geoffrey Chaucer in 1375. He is quoted as saying, For this was sent on St. Valentine's Day, when every fowl cometh there to choose his mate. And this is in reference to the fact that many Europeans in the 1400s believed that spring, specifically around the time of February 14th, was when birds began their mating season. The oldest valentine that we have in existence is a poem written by the Duke of Orleans in 1415 to his wife while he was imprisoned in the Tower of London. It is in the archives of the British Library in London. Next we have Cupid, and Cupid comes from Greek mythology. Cupid, uh, Cupid's name is actually Eros. Um, He's the Greek god of love. And Eros was a handsome, immortal man who played with the emotions of both gods and men by using his golden arrows. Um, It took a few hundred years for him to start being displayed as a baby angel. I'm not sure um, when that exact change happened, but he initially was was a full, full grown man who evidently was quite striking, uh, was, was, was quite handsome, excuse me. During the mid-18th century, it was common for lovers to exchange love letters on February 14th. As, as time went on um, and the printing tech progressed, the Valentine's Day card came into favor, replacing those handwritten notes. In 1847, Esther Howland started the New England Valentine Company in Worcester, Massachusetts. I know I didn't get that right. This, would, um, this business would create the first mass-produced Valentine's Day card in America. And before that, uh, they were either hard to find or imported from Europe. 
the regulation of postage in Britain is what also uh, led to this becoming a more uh, commonplace thing. Exchanging valentines picked up more in America after the Civil War. And this was thought to be because of the horrific things that happened during that time that it made people want to appreciate their loved ones more. In 1868, the first heart-shaped boxes came on the market from Richard Cadbury and his company. He did this to market a new type of chocolate that was coming out, and the chocolate was coming out at the, around the same time as Valentine's Day, so he chose to put those chocolates in a heart-shaped box, and the idea kind of took off from there. Valentine's Day would go on to become a well-known day of the year, celebrated by billions of people all over the world. Even today, more than 500 years after the first Valentine was written, we still celebrate it pretty much the same way, by giving someone a card, proclaiming our love for them, and a kiss and some chocolate. Um, according to CNET, in 2021, Americans spent $21.8 billion on Valentine's Day, which explains why Walmart puts that uh, Valentine's Day stuff out there right after New Year's. And that is how Valentine's Day happened. And now it's time for the Roundup. The Roundup. The Roundup. And we're going to round it up. No one truly knows the origin of Valentine's Day, but there are some strong theories. There were three early martyrs of the Catholic Church who were named Valentine, and any one of them could be the real Slim Shady. There's a fertility feast done by the Romans with some disturbing practices. Then a 5th century pope outlawed that feast and replaced it with a Christian holiday honoring one of the men named Valentine. It grows in scale, being celebrated across the world. Cupid was actually a Greek god named Eros who was not always a baby. And the first heart-shaped box of chocolates came from the company with that weird bunny commercial every Easter. Things I didn't know before. Things I didn't know. Yeah, that there are bits of St. Valentine um, if he is the real St. Valentine, including his skull are on display at different uh, Catholic churches across the world. When I saw that, I was, when I read that, I was just like, you just never know what to expect with a Catholic church. You just, you just never do. Let's see. In, in, in 1856, um, the New York Times spoke out against the exchange of Valentine's Day cards. They wrote an article that said that they are only for silly people, I'm paraphrasing, and don't give any real glimpse of emotions. And they said it had no useful feature and wished for it to be abolished which even in a paraphrase is, is some strong words for uh, a, a card about love. Um, and uh, the last one was that Cupid, like I said, was a Greek god named Eros and was not always a baby. I honestly did not know that those babies had any real significance to Valentine's Day. I just thought people decided cute little babies with arrows look cool, but evidently they put some more forethought into it. And this has been another episode of How Did That Happen? Thanks for listening. Be sure to check out the Twitter page at HDT Happen, where I post stuff about the podcast, and I'll see you guys next week. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah. Oh. Sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right, ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, full work limited by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.